Welcome to the fourth section of this course. In this section, we are going to be studying structural design patterns. Structural patterns help us to better realize and express the relationships between code entities. In this section, we will explore four of them. The decorator pattern, the adapter and facade patterns, people usually confuse these two, and finally, the composite pattern. In this video, we will study the decorator pattern. So, in this video, we will study the decorator pattern, what its main benefit is, and how to implement it using TypeScript. The decorator pattern offers an innovative way to extend objects while following the open-closed principle that we studied in the first section. In case you can't remember what it is, the open-closed principle says that a class should be open to extension but closed to further modification. So, if the decorator pattern is to be described in one sentence, that would be it. The decorator pattern allows us to dynamically add responsibilities to an object at runtime. To make this more clear, let's see what the alternative to the decorator pattern is, in order to understand what problem the decorator pattern attempts to solve. Let us imagine that we somehow need to model a computer in our code. We would most likely begin this modeling process by introducing a base class called computer. Then, for any added feature or specification, we would create a fairly distinctive subclass. For example, we would have a computer with a dedicated GPU, a computer with two monitors, a computer with a printer, and a computer with a microphone. Now, it's easy to understand the issue that can arise while we attempt to model stuff this way. The problem is that if we need to model a computer with both a microphone and a printer, we would have to create a separate subclass to handle both features. This can quickly get out of hand, and we can easily end up having multiple classes with very, very long names to represent objects that we may only use in one or two places in our code, because rarely do these objects get reused throughout the code base. We are obviously in great need of an alternative. This is where the decorator pattern comes in. With the decorator pattern, instead of having multiple subclasses, we start off with the computer class and create two types of subclasses. The first one is a computer component. This is what we call the decorator. The computer component decorator models a feature that can be added to its computer base class. We can have a printer decorator, dedicated GPU decorator, or a microphone decorator. The concrete computer class, on the other hand, is a class representing a computer, for example, a laptop or a server computer. What's the difference between the two, you may ask? Well, the difference lies in the fact that the decorator class also holds a reference to a computer, so it's not a real computer, it is actually a computer feature that holds a reference to the actual object it decorates, which means to a real computer. Let's now take a look at the inheritance tree we ended up with. Notice that all added features like the dedicated GPU, the two monitors, the printer and the microphone are all subclasses of the decorator class. That way, we can combine them to construct a computer. Let's say with a dedicated GPU, a printer and a microphone and all that at runtime. Therefore, we won't pollute our models list with models that are only going to be used once or twice and then we're going to drop them. The goal of the decorator is to combine a single concrete class with one or more decorators. Starting from a computer, we first decorate it with the microphone decorator. That means that we are creating a new instance of the microphone decorator passing in the computer object. What we get back from this initialization is actually a computer again. Remember, because computer component decorators are computers as well. The result is a computer with a microphone ready to be consumed by the next decorator in the pipeline. Then we can take that instance and wrap it inside a printer decorator to add that feature as well. And then we can go ahead and wrap it up with more decorators. 
and that is why a decorator holds a reference to a computer object. Enough theory, let's break the task down and start writing some code. One last note before we begin. Just because TypeScript offers decorators as a feature does not mean that we have to use TypeScript decorators for implementing the decorator pattern. In fact, most of the time, plain classes will perfectly apply to your needs. Let's begin modeling the computer classes that we studied in the previous diagrams. We're going to begin with a computer class that will implement the basics of what a computer does. For example, let's say that we have a method for booting up the computer. We're going to go with simple console.log statements to understand the core of the pattern instead of focusing on implementation details. Again, we have a new method called shutdown that is going to shut the computer down. We can go ahead and implement a method called display to display stuff on screen. Moving on, we can have something like print. Remember, we are going to add printers. But the default behavior will be that no printer has been found on a default machine that hasn't been decorated with a printer decorator. And finally, one more method called render video. This is where the dedicated GPU comes in. Unless you have a dedicated GPU, you're not going to be able to process a video. So let's say that this is the base class. Remember, we have to implement at least two more classes because we have two types of classes when working with the decorator pattern. The first one is the decorator component. Let's call that class computer component decorator. Of course, this class needs to extend the computer. But that's not the only thing that it has to do. It also needs to hold a reference to the computer. And what better way to pass this reference than the constructor itself? That way, you end up with a component decorator that in order to be initialized needs to have the computer instance in its constructor. You never end up with a decorator that has no reference to a computer. One more little detail that wasn't visible in the previous slides is that we have to re-implement all methods using the default implementation that the computer provides. This delegation of every single method of the base class to the containing object is actually very important because without it, we wouldn't be able to chain decorators. Notice the very minor and subtle difference here. We have a class that extends a base class, but then we are going to feed it with a computer object and our class is going to wrap it. We need to delegate all methods to that object because our object doesn't have a valid instance. Just because it inherits from a computer doesn't mean that it's going to inherit all methods of the computer that we pass to it. Let's move on and you will understand this concept more in the next example. The next example will have a server computer. This is a concrete implementation. We could have a laptop computer or an IoT computer of sorts. Again, we will have to implement all methods, this time with implementations provided that match the fact that we have a server computer. Well, in the case of pure console logs, we're just replacing computer with the word server, but you've got to realize that if we had real implementations, we would need to probably provide different specs and have different behavior. Two methods are enough. We're going to leave the base class to handle the rest, and we are going to move on with creating our first actual decorator. We're going to call it computer with printer decorator, and it's going to extend the base class. Now, this isn't the base class of all. Remember, the computer is the ultimate base class, but this is a decorator base class. You can't have a decorator extending the concrete class, the server computer, for example. You always have to override and extend the computer component decorator base class. Now, the only method that we need to change is the print method. Everything else will be delegated to the previous method, to the previous implementation of the decorator. It may be the generic one. We don't know. Each decorator doesn't know what other decorators have been used to wrap the same object. And this is what is really fascinating. For example, 
This is a second decorator. It's a computer with a dedicated GPU. This only implements the render video method. Now we can combine both of these classes, both the computer with printer decorator and the computer with dedicated graphics. We can wrap the same object and the first decorator doesn't have to care about the second decorator and vice versa. We can have both functionalities. The final object will be able to both print and render video, but one decorator doesn't know the existence of the other one. And we can see that if we get an instance of a server computer and then wrap it with the computer with printer decorator. The result is a server with a printer. But now we can take that object and wrap it in a dedicated graphics decorator. The result of all this process is a computer that can both render video and print stuff. And we only needed to create this at runtime. We can drop it, we can never use it again. We do not care. We haven't polluted our models list with a server with printer and dedicated GPU class. We only have an object. And you can see that it actually works. It can do both operations while still being a simple object and not a separate class. This is the power of the decorator pattern. That's all about the decorator pattern.